finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task to testify to the glory of God's grace. I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> Is that on now? Yeah. All right. Oh, good morning. Good morning. And happy Father's Day to all these gorgeous men we got sitting in this audience. And I just hope your day is glorious and you have a wonderful, wonderful time. Um, this is my, my sermon is, uh, is opportunity. And why I chose that, I really don't have a clue. Except it's my opportunity to to give the message before Alan this time for the first time. He's always been gone and had to see it on the video, so I'm a little nervous about that, but it'll be just fine. So let's start this in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just praise you for this opportunity to be in front of these people and to give a message to you on this wonderful Father's Day. Just be with all our fathers and make them all happy. Our substitute fathers also is Marianne, one of them said, sorry, might have got the wrong lady, but that's okay. Um, substitute fathers are really important, and uh, I'll kind of get into that a little bit later. But anyway, Father, we just pray that we have a wonderful day. Be with all of us, and thank you for this glorious weather. Amen. All, our, all of our men have roses. Okay, I have one final rose, and this is for our Father in heaven. Father's Day. Any man here on earth can be a father, but it takes a real man to be a dad. And that kind of fits in with the substitute fathers. It just kind of works right in there. There are so many substitute fathers out there that do such a marvelous job and take on so many children that have no fathers. And there are also men out there that, that are father-like to, to children that that aren't even really in their family. Um, you experience every, that every day. I saw that yesterday at the wedding. There were a lot of little children running around and they'd fall and there'd be a father right there to, ready to pick them up. And it was, it was just kind of awesome to see that because you could just tell that there was love in their hearts and, and uh, they were really sincere about what they were doing. There are some really awesome dads out there and there are some that aren't so awesome. Lots of their dads that are out there that are awesome take their responsibilities very seriously and lovingly. Some of the dads are just not nice dads. I unfortunately didn't have one of the good ones, but I found a father in heaven that will never let any of us down and loves us unconditionally. And the wonderful gifts he has to bestowed on us are absolutely amazing. His grace and his mercy, and it's just almost more than a person can handle it at times. The more we have a personal relationship with and believe and pray and pray and share with him, the more we will receive. What a wonderful Father in heaven we have. Many times lately I've read that he puts us through difficult times in our lives and does, does that for a reason. And it's kind of hard to understand at times. But he does that so that when we do realize his wonders, we have a better appreciation for it. When my son passed away in 1988, Jesus was by my side, but I didn't realize it. If I had known, his death would have probably been easier to understand. But he wasn't there, or I wasn't there with him. But I just praise God now that he is here with me, and I am happy about that. Amen. Amen. Let's look at a couple of the fathers in the Bible. Of course, we have our Heavenly Father. He is the number one father in our lives, and he is amazing. He knew from the very start 
that his son would someday be crucified on the cross for our sins. Can you imagine what that could be like living with that day after day knowing? But God has to have a, a super, super understanding to do things like that. Joseph um, thought for several months that Mary had cheated on him when she announced that she was pregnant. It was not revealed to him for several months, but he still stayed by her side and was faithful to her. And of course, he was a father and raised up Jesus, even it wasn't his own flesh and blood. What about Job? What a tragedy. Lost all his children, animals, wealth, and everything, and then to be inflicted with a terrible, painful disease for all those years. After all that, he was rewarded because he was faithful and did not sin. Last time I gave the message, we talked about the Holy Spirit and who am I? About the church as a movement to carry on the Great Commission in, that's in Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The questions were asked in the message, what is your spiritual gift? Have you yield to be used by the Holy Spirit? Do you really believe? These are all questions only you can answer. The Holy Spirit, it's been called the mighty rushing wind. In Acts 1, 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Every believer has been given spiritual gifts. These gifts have one objective, to propel Jesus' gospel to the ends of the earth. We so need the power of the Holy Spirit, and he is willing to pour it out. We just have to ask. The Spirit guides us to obey God's commands, adopt his values, and become the kind of people he wants us to be. We so need the power of the Holy, Holy Spirit. You will never be full of the Spirit as long as you're full of yourself. I like that one a lot. The best part of all is this is a truly, ama is a truly amazing promise made in the scriptures. Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. The key to this verse is submit to him. That is meaning you just sit back in your chair in your old ways and say, God, make this right. You have to do your part also. A rather insulting analogy God uses over 200 times in the scripture. He's my shepherd and we are, our, are his sheep. Bad news. Sheep are not very smart. They rarely make good decisions. They walk with their heads down low and really have bad eyesight so they don't see more than four or five feet ahead of them. Left alone, they walk off cliffs, drown in rivers, or fall down and can't even get off their backs like a cockroach. If sheep is going to get where they need to be, it won't be because of their smarts, but because of the compassion of their, and love of their shepherd. But what seems to be an insulting analogy actually turns out to be comforting. We have a competent and endless passionate shepherd who has promised to get us where we need to go because of our ability to follow him, but not because of, our, no, wait a minute. Not because of our ability to follow him, but because of his commitment to lead us. That's a quote from our little friend, J.D. Greer. Mm -hmm. Solomon said in Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You see, God lost confidence in our decision-making ability back in the Garden of Eden. He decided if, they, if we were ever going to get to the places he wanted us to go, it would be because of his leadership and not our followership. How do you like that word? <laughs> Psalm 3, 3 says, But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head eye. Isaiah 26, 12, Lord, you established peace for us. All that we have accomplished, you have done for us. The gospel dis declares to us that God has made himself close to us in Christ, holding us even tighter than a mother holds a new newborn baby. 
Isaiah 49, 15. Can a mother forget her baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Matthew 13, 58 is kind of a sad verse. And he did not do mighty works because of their unbelief. There he was in his hometown of Nazareth. Of all the places, Jesus must, must have wanted to pour out his saving power. Nazareth had to be among the greatest. His childhood friends were there, cousins, aunts, and uncles. But he did all, almost none of his mighty works there, not because of his unwillingness, but, be, but because of their unbelief. I certainly don't want that said about my family, my church, or my community. No one wants to get to heaven only to find out there was saving power he wanted to pour out that was never, that was, never was because no one asked. God has placed his divine powers of salvation at our disposal, just as he had with Paul. You and I have, given the, have been given the privilege of taking cer certain people from dark darkness to light, and that is a marvelous privilege. In 2 Corinthians 12.9, Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Paul saw his weakness as an advantage because he knew in those places he had, depend on, had to depend on Christ's power. If dependence is the objective, then weak, weakness becomes an advantage. Another little story about a little bird flying south for the winter. I'm trying to make this longer than... Um, <laughs> Mike's, but it doesn't look like it's going to work that way, but that's okay. A story about a little bird flying south for the winter. Being a poor planter, the little bird got caught in a snow snowstorm. When ice formed on his little wings, he crash landed. He thought, oh great, now I'm going to freeze to death. Then a cow came along and dropped manure on him. <laughs> At first, the bird thought his situation had gone from bad to worse, but he realized that the manure had thawed his wings. He got so excited he started to chirp and sing, but this attracted a cat who pounced on him. <laughs> Three things learned from this story. Not everyone who drops manure on you is your enemy. Not everyone who digs you out is your friend. And when you are in, are in manure, sometimes it's helpful to keep your little cheaper shut and just ride it out. <laughs> <laughs> if you are a believer, the power that brought the words into existence and Christ back from the grave is inside you, waiting to be released by just a simple prayer. Lord, yes, I will follow you. Everyone who competes in games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not, la that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slaves, so that after I have preached to others, I myself may not be disqualified for the prize. Can we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to give the message to my church family here. It was a blessing to me, and I hope it was to them too. I just praise you, Lord, for everything you've done for us and everything that's yet to come. And just be with us, Lord, as we go through the rest of this day and the weekend. And in this next week for people that are traveling. Praise you, Lord, in your precious name. Amen. Did I make it more than 18 minutes? <laughs> Probably not, but that's okay. <laughs>